So every year I grow most of my flowers and vegetables from seed. It's pretty easy to do. I'll run through the steps. I encourage you to buy a little mini greenhouse if you can, but you don't need to. And a lighting system, which is uh, generally going to be either LED or fluorescence. It's most efficient. doesn't use very much energy. And a good potting soil or seed starting mix. Here's my uh, lighting system being set up. I did buy a little bit more LEDs this year than last. I've been using fluorescent and LEDs throughout. There you can see one of the seed tray types that I use. I use three different types. So that one was a self-watering. This is the traditional tray with the cell packs inside. And then this, this is another one with uh, additional cell packs that are six pack. So I'll just go over, um, I bought these at Lee Valley. They're, I've been using them for years. Very good product and they're self-watering. So it's basically composed of three different layers. The uh, water tray, the tray that the uh, weeping fabric sits on top, which is you see here. I'm just placing the weeping fabric through the slots and that draws the water up from the water tray and keeps the soil moist so it waters from below instead of above so it works very well I'm not going to put any water in it at the start I'm just showing you how to set it up and we'll put some dirt in and then later on we'll fill it up with water and the way I do it I fill all my trays with dirt first get that all set up before I even look at seeds and what I'm going to place in them so you'll see that I'm filling all my trays with dirt first getting that out of the way and then going to the next step i just find it works better that workflow uh, works for me better but whatever you want to do is fine i'm just giving you some tips along the way here again use a uh, a potting soil not garden garden soil because uh, when you're first starting the seeds you want something kind of uh, light and fluffy with a little bit of vermiculite or perlite and some uh, peat moss mixture because you want those seeds to be able to uh, penetrate the soil and have a good root system to start off with. Okay, so I'm just kind of, uh, you'll see that I have um, here a big kind of roasting uh, tray or pan just to catch all the dirt because it, it gets a little bit messy, but uh, that's why I have a towel as well there. Um, you're going to have some dirt uh, splattered around, so that's not a big deal. But I would recommend either putting some newspaper down or have a tray or something to catch some of the dirt and water. Okay, so you just want to fill all your trays up. And you're lightly packing down the soil as well. You want them all to be the same, the same amount of soil in each cell. These are the old style uh, six pack. I've been using them for years. They're probably on their last uh, last year. Of being used uh, they're pretty fragile but they still work so all of my trays have been filled and now for the self-watering tray I take the bottom off I cleaned all the dirt out anything that fell in the bottom and now I'm gonna fill it uh, partially with water I'm not gonna fill it all the way up I'm gonna do that later on when it's inside the greenhouse this is just to get the fabric wet and to uh, start getting the the bottom of the soil wet you can see I have little gauges there, uh, the little black gauges with the red tip. So they go in either uh, either corner of these uh, trays, the self-watering trays. But you wouldn't have that in the traditional trays, obviously. But those are that's just a water gauge, a little floating gauge. So I'm placing the uh, the upper layers in with the fabric touching the water, and there you can see the number one on the tray. So what I do is I create one page per tray so I can keep track of what's in each cell. So just get an eight and a half, 11 uh, sheet of paper and just draw out the grid of your, whatever tray you're using. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake here just when I was demonstrating, I was kind of going too fast, but um, I put the correct number of rows. I'm just demonstrating that, how to draw it out here. Did the correct number of rows, but then I short, shorted the columns by one. So it should actually have four columns instead of three doesn't really matter because the the seeds in each row are the same but uh, just keep that in mind that uh, I didn't draw it out correctly but there you can see the three different flowers types of flowers that are going to go in this tray so what I'm doing here is I've just created a short form for zinnia ZN and you can see at the top left there I've uh, have a little uh, legend for what ZN stands for, what AS stands for, and what DI stands for. So Zinnia, Aster, and Dianthus. 
Okay, so that's just my, my method for keeping track of where everything goes. And believe me, if you don't keep track, you'll probably end up forgetting what went where, um, especially if you turn a tray around and you forget which is uh, the top side and the bottom side. Okay, so this is a zinnia. I'm going to just do two rows of that. And I'm going to show you three different sizes of seed. So a zinnia seed is pretty easy to work with. Um, those and something like marigold, they're very easy to grab and place in the cells. So not a big challenge. You don't really need tweezers, you can just do it by hand. And I generally will put two seeds per cell. For something like tomatoes or pole beans, you may just want to do one. But I like playing the odds and making sure that uh, you have good germination. So if one doesn't take, the other one will. Now you don't want to, you know, throw ten seeds in each one. Um, but I would, I always generally put two in, unless of course the, the you know, it's like I said, a, a pole bean or something that's a larger seed. Just put one. And you know, this is uh, th this is trial and error. You're not going to always get germination of every single seed. Sometimes the seeds are. There's something wrong with them. They're defective. They're old. Um, they're not always going to germinate. But if you follow these practices and water on a regular basis without overwatering or underwatering, and you have decent light, you should have good success. So after I put my seeds down, I just lightly tap them into place to set them. You don't have to do that, but I do. And then I add extra soil on top, just a light layer. Now every seed pack will tell you different depth levels, so you may uh, want to put a little bit further down, or but generally this works uh, for most of the seed types that I use. I place them down, pat them down, and then uh, put some soil on top. And if you put too much, just uh, skim it off, and that goes into your uh, your tray or newspaper. But just kind of keep it even. Again, try to use a, a light soil with a good peat moss mixture in it gives the roots an opportunity to grow and establish themselves before you move into bigger containers so the next one is an aster so a little bit smaller seed so everyone has maybe different methods of how they place their seeds down they use little containers or you could use tweezers and be really careful but uh, generally i can I'm pretty good at grabbing the seeds so these, yeah, two or three per cell is fine. And you can see in the soil, sometimes you're going to have the odd, you know, piece of wood or twig. Or even the large pieces of vermiculite. So you just pick those out. The seeds will grow around them, but you generally want uh, the larger pieces removed. Okay, lightly pat everything down. And it is pretty important to be pretty gentle when you're tapping things down and even when you're watering so you're not kind of you know moving the seeds out of the cells um, you have to be pretty careful that you're uh, keeping them in place once it's watered they're in place and set and that's not a big deal but at this stage you have to be pretty gentle so the next one is dianthus and they're almost the the size of a say poppy seed so again, I just put them in the palm of my hand and I kind of move them around and try to grab two or three at a time. So a little more challenging. If you want to use tweezers, you can. Um, it can get pretty tedious if you do it that way, but uh, once you get used to just kind of moving around your hand and just grabbing two or three, try to place them in the cell and separate them a little bit too in the, in the soil. This generally doesn't take too long. I, I think each tray probably takes maybe 10 minutes. So just take your time. So you add a little bit more soil on top. Again, be gentle and don't move the soil around too much. Just pat it down lightly. Again, once you water, everything's going to get uh, set in place. So, so what I do for the uh, the top watering is I add a little bit of liquid fertilizer. So in this case, this is a two liter pump sprayer, and I'm just adding about 10 drops. 
So the water that goes in the bottom of the tray, I don't bother putting nutrients just for uh, the initial watering in. And with my other trays, I, every time I do spray, I do add a little bit of liquid fertilizer, but very little, not, not a lot, just to give them a little bit of nutrients at the beginning. Okay, so I will add uh, links in the description to some of the products I use in terms of uh, like the fertilizer and this pump sprayer. So if you uh, have a hard time finding them, I'll show you where I got mine. But I like the sprayer because it's uh, you can adjust the pressure and it's just a uh, has a nice long uh, wand on it. So you can just gently create a spray and go back and forth and give them good soaking in. Again, you don't want to be too aggressive with your watering. If you're just using a, a watering container, um, just take your time. Don't uh, flood each cell and have everything come out the side. Just take your time. Okay, so just give them a good watering in. So the lighting system I use, um, they're LEDs. I got them on sale, actually. Usually I wait till things go on sale and... Um, they're just a, a T8 type of bulb, but they're LED and uh, kind of, but they have a, a spectrum that helps uh, plants grow. But you can use regular fluorescent shop lights as well. I wouldn't use incandescent. I would de generally uh, work towards using all LEDs. Very, very efficient. They don't use very much energy. Okay, so I'm going to place this in the mini greenhouse. It has four racks, uh, sorry, four shelves. So I'm going to put three of these trays on the upper shelf, and I have two two-foot LED bars of lights um, on the top there, fixtures. Okay, and there you can see I've numbered the trays, one, two, and three. And that corresponds to the 8.5, 11 sheet of paper with the grid on it. It tells me what's in each cell. Okay, number one. And I just have it in a corner of the basement where the, the wall's not painted, it's just primed, and I just uh, stick them around the wall. So whatever method you want it, you can use a book or a binder, but uh, make sure you keep track of where everything is. And this point, I uh, fill up the trays. I just use that little gauge there to determine when it's full. I just use a two-liter bottle with a, a little cap on top but you can certainly use a watering can. Watering is very important. You don't want to overwater. You don't want to drown your seeds. Just give them a good watering in, let them go for a few days, and then check again. I'm also showing you here, I, I harvest seeds from the previous season, so I let plants go to seed and then I'll uh, gather the seeds. So I don't do this with every plant, just the plants that I find do really well and that I like. Here are some Mylar uh, plastic sheet so they sell them as emergency blankets sometimes you get them in the dollar store pretty cheap and I've lined the inside of the greenhouse and that reflects the light back into the greenhouse instead of losing the light outside so I just tape that inside the greenhouse and it helps so there you can see this is after uh, depending on the plant um, within the first week you'll see some some signs of growth these are just peaking up so generally they stuff like tomatoes Cucumbers are going to be some of the first ones you see. And if you don't see some for, uh, you know, it could be a couple weeks uh, for them to germinate. So don't get too discouraged. Let things go for a while. But generally within three weeks, you should see signs of life. If you don't, then maybe you have bad seeds or something went wrong. But again, it's uh, you're not going to get 100% germination. It's fun to see what what grows and what doesn't. So this is uh, these are actually petunias. And this was after I transferred to bigger containers. So it's good to start your seeds. Uh, this is the, another plant that I grew as a milkweed, attracts butterflies, and a few other plants that are uh, in pots. And uh, I also grew some nice tomatoes. So there you go. That gives you the basics of seed starting. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for more videos. Please subscribe. And bye for now.